My guest on this week's show is one of the founder members of The Move and one of the top blues artists in the UK. Welcome, Trevor Burton. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. I believe you're really busy as well. Well, yeah, it never stops. It never stops. That's what we like to hear. As a muso, yeah. we love to hear that, don't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, life stories. Mm. Let's go right back to the beginning. Okay. You were born in Aston? Yeah, 2 back of 28, Wainwright Street. Aston, <laughs> Birmingham 6. Wow. <laughs> 1949? 49. 1949. I even remember your co-op number. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11 49 83. Wow. My mum said, you know, you go get this from the shops and don't forget the co op number. <laughs> Pay, yeah, everybody had the divvy number, didn't they? Well, you did. You got the turkey for Christmas, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what school did you go to? Upper Thomas Street Secondary Modern, which was situated um, the, in between Ansel's Brewery and HP Sauce. Yeah. And the playground was like in the middle. <laughs> so like in the summer, you had the vinegar coming one way, the oh. hops the other, you know, and your eyes ran a bit, you know. Because <laughs> wasn't Ozzy from around there as well? Ozzy was from Aston, yeah. 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 Wow. Okay, so I always ask this uh, question to, to, especially with musicians, what made you want to play guitar? Um, I started off playing the drums. Actually, it was quite natural. When I was little, I was like six or seven, uh, and I had a little. I just could just do it. And then playing the guitar, um, my brother had a skiffle group, and he had this guitar that had four strings on it. I, I didn't know how to tune it or anything. I sort of made the tuning up and started playing that. And then uh, Buddy Holly really, right, uh, was the first big thing and then my brother came back he did his national service he came back from Singapore with all these singles he had like uh, Chuck Berry, J. Lee Lewis, Fats Domino all the guys you know the rockers and yeah. that was that I mean I, that was it right I to, uh, then I became a guitar player right yeah and I, I, I read that um, <coughs> your first guitar was bought, bought for you by your auntie and uncle yeah well, it's a Burns guitar. Right, well, Burns, yeah. Well, the uh, Shadows play Burns, didn't they? Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was a little guitar, it's about that big, and the neck was really long. So every time you let go of the neck, it tipped up like oh, that. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. You know, and got rid of that as soon as possible. And I got a Fender Stratocaster, the second guitar I ever had. Wow. You know, it was <coughs> the, yeah, off the yeah. back of a lorry. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, in those days, the Fender Strat was you know, the business, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just so, looked supersonic and it played supersonic. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. But then, I, 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 going on from that, I, your, your first band, the Everglades, yeah. and the, the gig that you did um, at the Edge Baston Reservoir yeah, in, in the I Sea Scouts. Yeah, well. <laughs> and, and what was it, you all plugged into the same socket or something? Well, what it was, the only socket, and in them days, remember, it was all ramping plugs. Yeah. Big old bake light thing. Yeah, yeah. We were actually plugged into the light socket. <laughs> you can see, if there's a picture of it, you can see the one cable gone into the light. Everything was plugged into that. Which was a bit how's your father <laughs> I don't think health and safety no, would go no, for no, that no, anymore. No. <laughs> and you used to get shocks all the time, you know. A bit of earthy, earthy yeah, off the mic. Yeah. yeah, uh. yeah. But I was thirteen then. When I was just a singer with the Everglades. I uh, used to just sing and fronted a little bit right yeah so then from there your first professional band mm. was the one and only D Danny King <laughs> Danny King yeah <laughs> well you know there's a whole <coughs> book there in itself um, yeah. but I left school when I was 15 and uh, I had a job for a fortnight actually as a, a trainee mechanic car mechanic and one day I was down in the pit doing this sump and they undid it, so they changed the oil, and it came away, and it just got covered in oil from it all over me. And I thought, that's it. <laughs> I ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> Where's my <laughs> uh, guitar? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a professional. Uh, so just that time, I was asked to join Danny's band. Um, I, was, so I turned pro at 15 and was earning more in than my teachers was than my dad was. Yeah. 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 Well, it, just it, at that age. And 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 in, in and noticing the band was was um, Keith Smart. Well, Keith Smart and me grew up together. Right. He was almost my brother. 
Because my mum, we found out years later, he turned up at my house one day, Keith Smart. And my mum said, come in, sit there. She said, oh, sit there. And she's gone, you're a smart. <laughs> he goes, how do you know that? She said, well, no, your dad used to go out with him. <laughs> so like, we could have been brothers. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Oh, Keith, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get in touch with Keith. I must uh, keep trying. Well, he's in Spain at the minute, but yeah. I'll get him when he comes back. Yeah, he's out there and enjoying <laughs> himself. And then, so, how long were you with um, with uh, Danny for? Danny, um, two years nearly. Nearly two years. Must have been great sort of start that, you know. I what, was what incredible. Were you, six, 15, 16? Yeah. And playing like the nightclubs and, I mean, in, in them days, you, you could play three gigs a day sometimes. Yeah. But, a lot of the, three nights a week, you'd double up. You'd do like a pub gig or a rock gig, and then you go to and do a nightclub straight from there. And that's when I was 15, so you, and 16, and you're learning a trade. And I also yeah. went out to Germany with Danny at that point. Um, I've been with him about a year, and we went out to a little place called Fulda, which is on the East German border. Uh, we didn't. He, Johnny had been there originally, like with the, the first wave, mm. you know, before the Beatles even. Mm. He'd been out there, and. Uh, so that was a, a real grounding because everybody came back from there ten times better than they went out. Yeah. Because you had to be professional. Yeah. And we had the old thing. We did, uh, I think it was six 45 minute slots a night. On off, on off. And so when you came back, you'd really got your stuff together. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got that grounding from Danny as well. Right. Mm. And then after that, instantly, it was, it was the move, wasn't it? Yeah, more or less. How did yeah. that come about? Uh, again at the, the Cedar Club, um, which is a, all the bands played the Cedar Club, and it was also like a, a, a meeting place. If mm. you weren't playing there, you'd go there after the show, yeah. and you'd all meet up and have a drink and a laugh. And um, Ace Kefford and myself one night, we, I think Davy Bowie was there. We're talking with him. He was Davy Jones then, right? And the Lockers, I think they were called. <clears throat> and he, we were talking about this and that. And he said, "You guys, you know, you should." get a new band together. So we thought, that's a good idea. So <laughs> I said, why don't we get all the, the, the youngest guys out of the best bands and put them together? So there's like the uh, Carl Wayne and the Vikings, there's Mike Sheridan and the Knight Riders, there's Danny King and the Mayfair set. But as, as it happened, we had three Vikings, one Knight Rider and one no. Mayfair, which was right. me. There's uh, Carl Wayne and uh, Bev Bevan, right. Ace Kefford from the Vikings, and there's Roy Wood from the Knight Riders. And that became the move. Right. And uh, instant magic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the manager, I mean, Tony Secunda, he, he was one of those sort of mystical uh, magicians who yeah. came up with all these wild and wonderful sort of stunts. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, well, he had been involved with uh, Marky Artists before us. Right, yeah. And was a part of the Moody Blues. Yeah, set up, you know, making them what they were, mm. and he heard about us, and he came up to see us in Brum, and uh, then we went down to London to Marky Artists, and Harold Pendleton was running Marky Artists at the time, and it took us here. He was working for him as an agent, and we went into there, and uh, they signed us up. Then we got a residency at the Marky, right. Which was great. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, well, I think we did it for nearly a year every Wednesday night, I think it was. Uh, we took over from the Who, <laughs> who finished and we took their spot. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, and Secunda was then said, right, I'm leaving Marky Artists, so I'm going to be your manager. And that's what happened, and he became our sole manager. Right. And I, 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 the other thing I saw <laughs> as well was that, um, you know, you started off, you were doing Motown stuff. Yeah, we used to do a lot of Motown and chess, some chess stuff yeah, as well. Yeah. Bec the, the really because the move was a great harmony band. It was this, the, the move's strength was four piece harmony. Right. So you could have like three people doing the backing vocals and yeah. one person singing. And then we used to switch the lead vocals about in a song as well. Right. And, and then the, uh, switch the, the backing vocals in one song, you get people doing different parts. Yeah. And that was a real move strength, you know, the harmony. So we yeah. had great singers. And I suppose, yeah, that that was one of the signatures of bands from Birmingham. I mean, you like the Fortunes mm -hmm. and, uh, and people like that. They all always had great harmonies, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, it was, a, it was a good thing. I mean, I remember Night Sh Mike Sherman and the Night Riders were the same. Mm. They had great vocal harmonies. Yeah. You know? And the Rocking Berries, they had yeah. great vocal harmonies. And, you know, the yeah. songs that, that, uh, that you know, you, you <coughs> came out with, mm. uh, 
I can hear the grass grow. Um, Fire Brigade, well, that was one of my favourites. Yeah. Fire Brigade. It's one of mine still, actually. And, and yeah. did you have hand in writing mm. those? No. No. Mm. Excuse me. We had um, a big part in the sound of them and, and uh, you yeah. know, the actual arrangements of them, but right. Roy Wood wrote the songs. Right. And um, I suppose, you know, all good things come to an end or yeah. we move on. <laughs> A bit of a pun there. Thank Sorry you. about that. <laughs> so you then went down to to London. Yeah. Um, was it you, you lived with Noel Redding for a while, didn't you? We got to be really good friends. Well, I did with all of them, Jimmy and Mitch as well, because mm. we toured a lot together and we did a lot of shows all over Europe together and got on a treat, you know. And the move had always going backwards and forwards from London to Birmingham, you know, for this and that. And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I'm a young man. Fancy free. I want to live in London. I'm yeah. a rock star. What yeah. am I doing this? Why well, I want to live in London? <laughs> so Noel said, I'm me, because he came from um, uh, Folkestone. Right. So we decided to get a place in London, which we did. We got a house in London. Well, I call it a house. It was in Wandsworth. It was a bit of a dump. But, you know, we were free and uh, yeah. had a great time. Yeah. You know. The next band you joined then mm. was um, like with Steve Gibbons. Yeah. Was that Balls? Balls. Yeah. Uh, well, that was like I left the movie because I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to be a pop star anymore. I'd right. been jamming with, with Traffic and Windward and those guys down in Berkshire for right. a couple of years, yeah. and really, you know, they showed me how to be, an, how to improvise and go down that road and, yeah. and do and play the blues and go there. And I thought I can't. I'm doing that, and I'm going on stage going diddly diddly diddly. <laughs> I thought like I don't want to do this anymore, right. so I quit. I quit when I was 19 from the move, and Blackberry Way was number one in the charts but I had to get out right so I'd been good friends with Steve Gibbons for a long time and we had the same tastes and everything and he had a band called The Uglies mm, in yeah. which Keith Smart was a drummer with at the time <laughs> and Richard Tandy from ELO was playing keyboards with him uh, and I thought that is a ready made band there so I said to Steve you know what we get together and form a new band so, alright then what we're going to call it so we sat one night and we, I said, let's all write names out, cut them up, put them on the floor. And then we'll turn them over and see which one we like. And I just wrote balls <laughs> and put it in the middle. And everybody went, that'll do. <laughs> and of course, Tony Secunda loved it, being like yeah, yeah, yeah. the sensationalist he is yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. Um, he went, balls, that'll do. <laughs> Straight onto the, <laughs> the nationals, you know, yeah. in the next paper. The <laughs> paper the next day, everywhere. Um, yeah, so that's how that came about. And then it sort of gradually, we, we, we went down to Fording Bridge about a house there with the band. And that totally disintegrated until it was just, uh, there was just Steve and me left in the end. And we'd linked up with Danny Lane at the time. Danny who Lane, was from, yeah. you know, yeah. the Moody's. And he became part of Balls. And then Alan White, who was playing with uh, Plastic Ono band with yeah. Lennon and Yoko. He became part of it. It was just because we were all mingling together in London as well. and jamming together and doing stuff to, like that and it just finished up there with and suddenly it was super group you know right balls yeah which actually was a, a, a total nothing because we spent a whole year in Buckinghamshire in a, in a house we had and came up with absolutely nothing <laughs> so there was one track I think Fight for My Country which right. was one of my songs and uh, what was the uh, the B side of that Denny wrote and that was all that came out of that right Right. Well. And then you went on to, I, I see you were a session player with Island Records. Well, yeah. Not must have been strictly fun. in the sense that they, I worked for them, but I actually finished up in a, a, a flat right opposite the studio. Right. In, in Lancaster Grove. And uh, because I, I was, became really good friends with Paul Kossoff, who lived just up the port of Ottawa, just around right. the corner. Right. We were best of friends. And I did an album with him called Backstreet Crawler. Right, um, yeah, yeah. The whole of the, the B side is one track called Tuesday Morning. And I'm playing bass on that right. with Alan White on drums and Rabbit on yeah, keyboards, yeah, yeah, who yeah. Did, did lots with the Hoover, yeah, you know, for the yeah. last few years. And uh, it's just a, one, a jam. It's just the one side is fabulous. Wow. And, um, and then because of traffic, I knew Jim Capaldi and uh, I did some stuff with him. And then. Uh, Luther Grosvenor I knew from uh, uh, Spooky Tooth mm. and he did an album and all island artists and I yeah. used to get roped in 
quite just a across lot. the road. Oh, yeah. No so guitarist, just over no, there. I was just wondering, <laughs> join in, you know. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Not actually a session man from Ireland, but I was, did a lot of yeah, yeah. albums at Ireland. Yeah. And then when you came back via Froggy, mm. uh, Raymond Froggett, um, you then hitched up with Steve Giddens again, didn't you? Well, I came back from London. Um, Tony Secunder again came round one night when I was in this flat in uh, Notting Hill Gate. He, he came round and he, he said, here's 100 quid, go home else you're going to die. So I took his advice. <laughs> and I went back to my mum's and cleaned up the act. And um, joined Raymond Frogger. I was with Frogger for nearly two years, yeah. playing bass. Uh, again... I think I think Smarty was part of that at one point. He's part of everything, isn't he? Yeah. Keeps to, got to get him on the show. Yeah. Keith, where are you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come home. <laughs> um, and then Steve came round. Uh, Froggy sacked us actually, because Froggy does this quite often. You know, he'll just sack everybody and start again. Yeah. And uh, we all these all that was left was him and H, who's who's been with him forever and ever. Right. And uh, and then. Stevie came around and asked me to join his band on bass, and that was the start of that. And I was with Stevie for eight years. And they did, you did Tulane, didn't you? Yeah. Did two and I remember, I remember working with you. I, I was with Sad Cafe, mm. and we, we were with Nils Lofgren in Germany. Yeah. And we, were, we, we did this big place in Nuremberg, and you guys turned up, just came in, did the set, blew everybody away, <laughs> and was out the door again. And it was like, wow, what happened there? <laughs> Fantastic. And yeah. you'd obviously been, you were so tight, you know, you'd obviously been really sort of working hard. Well, I think for, God, I must have been like four years we didn't stop touring. It was like non-stop. Yeah. And I think probably on that occasion, we, we've been touring Germany for about six weeks. Yeah. Every yeah. night, oh, and that's tell. towards the end of it. Yeah. And it was just like, poof. <laughs> yeah. You know. So moving on from that, um, you then uh, via various like Robert Plant, I see you work with, mm. and, and uh, big, big, big town playboys. That must have been an interesting one. Yeah, that was through a friend of mine, um, Roy Williams. Right. Who used to mix the sound at JB's originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was sound man for Robert for a long time, and then he discovered C6 Steve, and he was, he was sound man for a few years recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they. Lost the guitar player. Well, it was, it was um, Andy Fair with the lowest sitting in with them. Right. And then he'd gone off with Eric Clapton. So they asked me if I wanted to tour with them, which I did. And then they asked me to stay on for a, a one more tour. And then again, Mike Sanchez, mm. the leader of the band, is one of those guys, another one that wants to change things all the time. Yeah, yeah. He said, I want to try this other guitar, Trev, you know, this other guitar player. I said, what, you got the sack? <laughs> he said, no, 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 it's not a sack, no, no. But we'd like to try this other guy. I said, you know, yeah. you've got the sack, then have I? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. th then, then along comes the, the Trevor Burton band. Yeah. Um, you started off in the Red Lion, didn't yeah. you, in Bolsall Heath? Well, that, that started before the, the Playboys, actually. It started in 83, after I left Steve. Um, I formed the Trevor Burton Band. It started mm. at the uh, Lady Pool Road, at Red right. Lion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I, I know you, you, you did a, there's, there's an album that you did that's, that's evidently a bit of a collector's item, I think. Yeah, that was, um, what was the first one? Double Zero. Right. Double Zero was the, the first original one, the original band from the Lady Pool Road. Yeah, and you used to you used to, did you used to do the railway as well. Yep, that was that was a good venue, wasn't it? Well, it was, it, the railway was started by me and Roger Hill and Tom Farnell. Uh, they used to have like a Sunday afternoon session, and when I first came back to Birmingham from London, I used to go there and just have a little jam. And then Albert Hearn was the boss. And it, we said, you know, we'll, we'll do Mondays and we'll do Wednesdays. And that was me, Tom, and Roger Hill. Right. And that's how we, the railway started. Right. With, again, with us starting a new gig. And then you, you've now got uh, a rocking trio. Yeah. Um, you, with uh, what, Bill, and, Bill and Pez. Yeah. yeah. Bill I mean, Jefferson and Pez. Yeah. Connor, yeah. Bill's been with me 15 years now. And Pez, well, he's been with me twice because I sacked him once. <laughs> And then I, I asked him back. <laughs> and, it, and, and the two times, I think he's been moving about seven years. Right. So, yeah, but the last time, he's been moving now four years. So the, it is a tight little outfit. Brilliant. You know. <laughs> 